I'm going to show you how to create a style sheet for your blog using Adobe Illustrator. This is going to be a great reference for you next time you're creating a graphic or image for your blog. You're going to be able to quickly look at your style sheet and know exactly what fonts and colors you're using. Or if you have a VA helping you, you can send them your style sheet and they're going to know exactly which sans serif font you're using for your business because they kind of all look the same. I created this template hopefully you have it open in Illustrator and we're just gonna start putting in the different things the different pieces of your brand that make up the entire picture of your brand so from here you're gonna go to file and place and you need to find your um, folder of stuff so I'm gonna be using one I've finished for a client to kind of show you what's going on so I have folders that have organized all of her logos so that it's easy to find. That way I'm never digging around for what I need. We're always gonna wanna use a PNG. Whenever possible, go ahead and use your high resolution. The first thing we need is the primary logo, and that's here. Usually uh, it's long and skinny. It really depends on your brand. Sometimes it might be short and fat. Sometimes it might be a circle. Um, but this one is long and skinny. That's kind of standard and I'm gonna make it pretty big so it fits in the space and it, you can tell that this is the main feature so what I did is I used these anchor boxes and I press shift to increase the size while I'm dragging and that makes the file maintain its proportions if for example I just drag this without holding shift it will skew and stretch the box. So in order to prevent that from happening, I just hold shift as I'm using the anchor boxes. So I'm gonna control Z, undo button, and it undoes whatever I just did. So the next thing I'm gonna add is a logo variation. I'm gonna go ahead and place that here. So the logo variation is um, usually a short version. If your main logo is long and skinny, then you will oftentimes need a short, fat version that can work in more constrained spaces. So, and you'll see here when I'm using my mouse to move it along, you'll see these um, guides pop up. These are called smart guides, and those help you line things up with the, with the other objects around and then how to kind of get things lined up perfectly. Okay, now I'm gonna add the submark. And the submark is usually a simplified version of the logo. Um, it might be in a circle, it might be in a square, it might not be. It's kind of a thing. A lot of times it's an initial or just a one simple icon. Uh, for mine personally, I have an E and an A kind of next to each other. Um, for this brand, I've done a pink one, a black one, and then a light pink one. Just to kind of give her some variety to use. I'm going to go ahead and put these two on here. And when I click and drag... It will make sure that they are the same size so I just clicked and dragged them together and actually I'm gonna make them a tiny bit smaller so because I want them to be the same size no matter where they're at I'm gonna click the first one and I'm gonna press shift and click the second one and that's gonna allow me to resize both of them at the same time and I'm still holding shift while I drag the mouse to the top to make them a little bit smaller and I'm gonna use my left and right arrows to give them a little more space again I hold shift while I'm doing this because holding shift and using your arrow makes it move in an increment of 10 rather just one so you can move it one space or you can move it 10 spaces depending on how quickly or how much you want to move things now I also want to drag these more so they're kind of centered a little bit with the style of this logo more centered in this box, so I just pulled them down a little bit. All right, next we're going to do the colors. These are the main colors of the brand. So I'm just gonna press Control C and place this over to the side of where I'm working so that I can just grab them from there. So the number one color we're using for this brand is actually black. The next color is the hot pink, so is I'm going to use um, my eyedropper tool. So what I've done is I've selected the box and now I'm going to press the I on my keyboard and that's going to switch my tool into an eyedropper. You can also find this on the tool panel on the left hand side. It's this little eyedropper 
and I'm going to click on this pink box and it's going to change the box to match the color. Now I need to get the hex code. So I'm going to come in here on my properties panel and I'm going to click on the, f the color box and it opens up this panel. Now yours might be on this panel first. You can change the process in which the color is created over here. Um, but for for what we're doing, we want to use WebSafe RGB or RGB. They both work the same. WebSafe just has a fewer colors to choose from. So now here's my hex code. I'm going to copy and paste that over here. So now I want this to be all caps, just like everything else kind of is on my board. So I'm going to come in here to the characters of my properties panel and click on these three dots and this little double T is all caps. I'm just going to go through and do the rest of these. The next main color, I like to do the colors from the most, the ones we use the most down. So now another cool little thing is I can select all of these. If I press shift and select these ones, I can make them all all caps at once. So next is the fonts. So here, what I like to do is I like to name this the fonts that we've used, put in the title of the fonts. So this brand uses Lato and Laura. What I do here is highlight this text and search for the um, font in your character panel. Okay, as for icons, it really depends on the brand. You might have actual icons that you're using, um, or you might just have brand elements. For this particular brand that I'm using today, it's just brand elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in here because this template is totally customizable. So for the brand elements here, I need to place a couple of images. We have, okay, so I'm gonna select a few things. I'm gonna click on one and I'm gonna use the command button. If I hold command while I pick, I can pick multiple things. If you hold the shift button, it'll just select the things between the two. So this is holding shift where I click here, I hold shift and it clicks, it selects all of the files in between the two. If I do this and I press command, I can pick and choose exactly which ones I want to use. So here I just want to display some of the brand elements. Now you definitely don't have to put everything that, um, especially as your brand grows, you'll kind of get quite a few of these, but when you're designing a new brand, it's a little bit easier to um, display what you've got. So we have these streaks and splatters that go with this brand. brand. And down here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the mood board. So this part is, again, totally optional. Customize this as you see fit. Your mood board might be bigger or smaller, and so you really need to, you might have to resize. So this one is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna resize my artboard. I'm gonna click over here on my toolbar and I'm going to this little guy right here. So, and then I can drag the artboard as big as I need. And we're done. Uh, it might be nice, I think, to put the website, put your website down here. That way, um, if people see this and they wanna see it kind of in action, they can come find you. Beautymeetsgirl.com. I'm gonna change this to Lato. Um, what you're seeing here is I'm just kind of editing the text a little bit. That way, if someone sees this and they're like, oh, this is cool, I want to see it in action, they can totally come to you. So if you didn't want to include your inspiration board, you would just shorten your artboard instead of lengthening it. If you have only four colors instead of six, just select them all at once like this and you can ar arrange them so that they're centered into the box. I think that's everything you need to know to create your style sheet. So um, if you end up having any questions, feel free to email me at hello at erinalexanderdesignstudio.com and I could totally help you out.
All right, good luck. Let me. Thanks for following along. If you want more help with Illustrator or graphics you might need for your blog, head over to my website, ErinAlexanderDesignStudio.com. You might even like my course. You might even like my course, Illustrator for the Non-Designer. It was made for bloggers and business owners just like you who are ready to make better graphics.